welcome to Malkia Talks. Today we will be baking again, although this week it's sweet instead of savoury because we are making sweet buns. Now for those of you who don't remember the dish from the book, it is the um, item that Matt gave away when a couple of I said I were leaving his band at the Red Hand camp um, and he tricked one of the I said I into taking them knowing that she would keep them all to herself because um, he put sprinkle water in there I believe to make them turn their mouths blue. Those of you who want to know exactly where in the books this is, you're looking for um, Towers of Midnight, chapter 17. I've got it right here, so I'm going to read the bit to you. So this is the bit where he gave it to her. Uh, so it's all she just said I'm taking off. And uh, he hands her the cloth wrap package from under his arm. He handed it to her. What is this? She asked, not reaching for it. Matt shook the bundle. Parting gift, he said. Where I come from, you never let a traveller depart without giving her something for the road. It would be rude. So she takes it. Um, and then after they've all wandered off, uh, Tom wanders over to him. And uh, it's, it's quite interesting. So before long, they were making dust along the road. Tom stepped up to Matt, watching the riders. Sweet buns? Tradition among us two rivers folk. Never heard of that tradition. Mm, it's very obscure. Ah, I see. And what did you what did you do to those buns? Sprinkle wort, Matt said. It'll turn her mouth blue for a week, maybe two, and she won't share the sweet buns with anyone except her warders. Jolene is addicted to the things she might have eaten seven or eight bags worth since we got to Caitlin. So that's what we'll be making today. It was a suggestion I received on Discord. Um, and I was like, you know what, let's give that a stab because that sounds great. So what you will need to make your sweet buns for the actual buns themselves, you will need 25 grams of sugar. I've just gone for caster sugar here. You could use regular sugar if you wished. Uh, you need 250 grams of plain flour. You need five grams of dry yeast and half a teaspoon of salt. I'm not going to pick it up because, well, I will pick it up actually. Half a teaspoon of salt to go into there. We're also going to need one beaten egg, which I've already got pre-beaten in there. 110 mils of warm water, sort of like room temperature, a little warmer than that sort of thing. Some 25 grams of melted butter, which I've got there. And then obviously you'll need a filling. So because they're blue, uh, like turning the mouth blue, the filling I've gone for is uh, blueberry jam. Okay, so I've got a really nice blueberry jam here. I'm going to mix that in with some cranberries, so there's a bit of fruit in there as well. So just got some nice standard dry cranberries. But obviously the key point of this dish is turning the mouth blue. So to ensure that happens, I hope, I have brought some blue food colouring. And I'm going to amp up the blue in the blueberry jam. So that um, when you eat them, hopefully, the filling fills your mouth and turns your mouth blue. Probably not for a week or two. But, you know, if it's just for the afternoon because you've eaten the buns, that's great. So that's where we are today, play. So we will get started. All right, first thing you want to do is you want to mix in your flour. Let me put that in there. Look at my new sieve. Yay! <laughs> for those of you who watch my videos, yes, I've only just got a sieve. It's quite fun. Um, oh, sorry, I'm just going to sieve that in there. It's only 250 grams, so it doesn't take much to go through. Lovely, lovely. Sauce it. You're going to mix in your sugar, your yeast, and if I don't drop it, half a teaspoon of salt. All of the wash now. So, I'm just going to, oh, not a fork, pick up the right tool, it will help. Just going to mix those together. Okay, nothing crazy. Lovely. Now we're going to have, uh, now we're going to add in half the beaten egg. Okay, so I'm just going to go back. You're going to be saving the other half later for glazing the buns. And we're going to mix in the warm water. So it's all very simple at this stage. And then you just want to mix that together. That's starting to come together a bit now. At this stage, you see we're starting to get 
sort of like a dough-like texture up here. At this stage, you'll be adding in the butter. stage I'm going to get him on my hands as well. So. so now that you've added the butter you should be getting something doughy start to happen. Now at this stage what you want to be doing is you want to be kneading this for 10 minutes. It's a lot of kneading. I'm not going to make you watch me do it so don't worry. Um, but we're going to knead this for 10 minutes. After we've um, got it really sort of smooth and elastic is what you're going for then we are going to cover it up and leave it in a nice cool well, a nice cool warm place <laughs> a nice sort of warmish not hot area covered to rise for 30 minutes okay so i'm going to work on this for 10 minutes get it smooth and elastic i'm going to show you what it looks like ideally and then we'll leave it for half an hour to rise so the yeast can activate with the wet mixtures that we put in there so see you in 10 minutes Okay, so I've been having me do rise for, for 30 minutes and uh, let's have a look. I'll get it back out of the tub. So yeah, so as you can see, sort of very smooth, elastic. Now what you want to do at this stage is you want to be punching it down and you want to be breaking this up. Now, I've got to be honest, the recipe said 10. I don't think we're going to get 10 out of that. I'm going to go for 8. So, yeah, what are we doing? Enough. Uh, how do we do that? Yeah, yeah lovely. No, that actually. <laughs> it's like I'm scoring bread or something. As you can tell, I like things very rough and ready. So we're going to have various sizes going on for these sweet buns, but that's fine. So now they've done a little bit of rising, you want to let them rise for another sort of 10, 15 minutes. Nice warm place still. I'm going to put that back on top. So yeah, let them sit there and rise for oh, it's sort of 10, 15 minutes. And then we are going to roll them out and fill them up. Delicious filling. Uh, at this stage, I probably recommend you put your oven on as well. So they are going to bake for, oh, do you know what? Actually, scrap that. It's too early because they'll need to sit for a little while after you've filled them. So um, ignore that completely. Separate out into however many you're going to make. I, I've gone for eight here myself. You could go for six. You could try and make you know, 10 small ones. As, depends how your batch works out. I mean, maybe yours has risen more than mine. Um, you know, it, it's not exactly the hottest day of the year right now, so, but yeah, so we're going to let that sit there for 10, 15 minutes, roll it out, fill it up, shape it, and then it's got to sit there again for 20 more minutes. This is definitely not a quick little dish. Jeez, I need to find some quick dishes from Wheel of Time to make. <laughs> Where are those sandwich options? Come on. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's where we're currently at, so <laughs> see you in another 15 minutes then. Ciao. Okay, so they've rested for another sort of 15 minutes and uh, now we're going to be rolling them out. So I've got a bit of flour, obviously, just to be benched up. Not going to go crazy. Lovely. Got me nice, beautiful acrylic rolling pin. Nice and simple. 
and we're going to roll them out. So, we'll start with the little one first. You just want to, you want to get a nice circular motion. You want to circular motion using the back and forth motion on the rolling thing. You want to get a circular shape. Um, you want, you know, you're going to be pinching this uh, together. And uh, you're obviously going to be filling it. So you don't want to get it too thin because then when you pull it together, it's just going to, you know, break apart. But at the same time, if it's not big enough, then uh, you're not going to be able to pinch it together. But we're going to start with that one. I'm going to do a bigger one as well, I think. Let's do that and uh, let's see what we get. Let's put that one back there just for a second. Right. As I've said before on this channel, I am not a baker uh, by trade or by practice at home. It's not really, you know, high on my priority list. Uh, the last woman I dated was the baker in the uh, partnership. So, you know, but uh, hey ho, we'll, we'll see how these things turn out. Uh, see, this one's a bit better in comparison. So obviously, if you portion them out better, you're going to get, you know, slightly better mix going on. But what we want to be doing is putting in our mix. So I've got here, this is my wild blueberry jam. Okay. And I have put in a good amount of blue food coloring. I don't know how well if you can, how well has that turned out? Uh, it doesn't really look very blue, to be honest. When I put it in, it was very blue. So I'm just going to, I'm going to go smaller around on this one. I don't want to be too wild or, or crazy. Now we, and then this one, I can go a little bit more on, obviously, because it's bigger. And cranberries, because I thought blueberry cranberry, that's a nice combination. I didn't want to go blueberry and blueberry, that seemed a little crazy. So I'm just going to pop those in there, just a few an inch. Now, here's the fun part. So you want to be bringing them together okay and you just want to pinch it all up and again this is what happens if you if you overfill you're going to get a problem going on now you could i suppose you could leave it like a like a dumpling type thing but what you actually want to be doing is rolling it oh christ this is uh this is where it's not going to work is it oh please work <laughs> please work come on <clears throat> Let's see what we got. I think I'm just going to squeeze this one and see if I can get it slightly. Well, I will put it that way up. There we go. It looks nice. <coughs> but uh, yeah, I've tried to, to pinch it together. How well are we looking? Can you see that? You know, so without squeezing out the contents, maybe a bit too much flour. Let's uh, see if we have any more luck with this one. I read the instructions right. Let's have a quick give you that first. One moment. No, I've, I've double checked it. I was right the first time. My notes are correct. Nothing, no egg or nothing. I'll just pull it together a pinch. So we're going to try. Um, so maybe I shouldn't flour the bench. Maybe that's the issue. But we're going to pinch this together. And we're going to see what we achieve. Got a little bit more to play with in this one so I can sort of pinch it properly. And then it says you want to, to roll it, but I definitely feel like if I roll it, I'm just going to end up with it not working very well. So I think I'm just going to stick with, maybe I get a little dab of water to stick that one, it's a bit too, too dry, but putting them in when I bake them. Upside down, I think. I don't know. Maybe I'll, no, I'll do it that way. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. I'm going to carry on and get the rest of these done. I'm probably going to get better as I go on. And then I'm going to put them onto a nice greased buttered tray so we can bake them in the oven. But on that tray, they need to sit there for, well, you guessed it, more time to rise. So, and that is another 20 minutes. As I said earlier, if you don't have a lot of time, this is not what you want to be making. <laughs> Damn yeast. 
And um, yeah, anyway, we'll uh, we'll get these finished, get them on tray, sit them for 20 minutes, and I will show you what they look like. Hopefully, pretty good at um, at that mark. And so then we're going to put them in the oven. So once you've finished doing your rolling, pinching, squeezing, hopefully something better than this in. Um, put your oven on 200 degrees centigrade that's 400 degrees Fahrenheit or gas mark 6 depending on what you're using and then we're going to to bake them once they've sat for 20 minutes um, but we'll talk about that when we come back <coughs> right so uh, I'm not really sure if I got better or if I got worse I mean these are near the beginning and then I went through a bit of a bad patch that spread uh, I don't really know what's happening <laughs> It wasn't possible to roll them into balls, I'm going to tell you that right now. Um, so, unless someone else is, uh, I mean, by all means, if you, if you know how to make that work, great, let me know, <laughs> you know. Uh, I'm not a baker. So, what is to be done at this stage is we need to um, brush them with the rest of the beaten egg that we had from earlier, and then we're going to let them sit for 20 minutes. It's very important that we grease this tray first, obviously. Uh, I've just put some butter on the bottom. And uh, now is a good time to preheat your oven. Remember, 200 degrees centigrade, gas mark 6, 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, if you've got a fan-assisted oven, just drop it by 20 degrees. Um, and then, yeah, once that's sat for 20 minutes with the egg glaze on, we're then going to bake them for 20 minutes as well. And we'll do the taste test and obviously the visual blue test. See if that works. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, I'm... Um, I'm feeling okay at this stage. Uh, my crimping, squeezing, balling, attempting at not putting food colouring all over myself has uh, semi-successful at this stage. Um, but we'll, we'll see what the finished product is like. Um, I like to make these first time around with you guys. Um, I don't like to be primped and polished and like, here's this and here's this and here's this, you know. So I like to be very personable. And do you know what? I, I like to take the experience and show it to you straight off and not practice the dish five times. Plus, I live alone if I made this three or four or, or even once or twice before showing it to you on, on camera. Um, I, it might be a very portly chef that uh, <laughs> that comes on the stream. Might need a second camera just for me. Um, and I don't want to get to that stage, obviously. <laughs> so yeah, I make these, I look up the recipes, and unless it's something I've never, ever, ever done before, and I thought, you know what, if I don't practice this first, it's just going to ruin everything. I try it first time on camera with you guys because I think that's a lot more fun. So yeah, I'm going to brush these of egg, leave them for 20 minutes uh, in a nice warm place again, and then bake them for 20 minutes. I will, uh, yeah, I will show you how that works out, and then we give them a taste. So we'll see you soon. Right, so they've sat around for a further 20 minutes um, with the egg glaze on. This one's starting to split a little. Sorry, just realised it's not on camera. This one's starting to split a little bit. Um, yeah. But, I don't know, we've got one, two, three, at least three, almost four that are staying close together, so, um, 50-50. <laughs> yeah, we'll call it 50-50, I like that. But, they go into the oven now for 20 minutes, say 200 degrees centigrade, uh, that's 180 fan assist, 400 degrees Fahrenheit uh, from the 200 if you're in America, and gas mark 6 if you're using gas, and uh, yeah. We'll see how they come out in 20 minutes. Fingers crossed. Right, so sweet buns are out. Um, I have to say, do you know what? For a, for a very first attempt, I'm um, I'm not feeling too uh, too bad about that. Got a little bit of uh, you know a little dark on a couple of the edges, um, but overall not too bad. Um, they definitely. I think I should have made the pastry a bit thicker. I'm definitely going to make more pastry next time. So that A, I can have good sized buns, but B, I can make the pastry thicker because I've had a bit of leakage um, in my baking tray. <laughs> um, so yeah, a little bit of the jam came out, but uh, not really that much. And, um, you know, considering how it could have turned out, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy. I say they're a little soft um, and you can tell that uh, it's going to break through, but... Oh, there has got that lovely baked smell, um, you know, not not the bread baked smell, but like the sweet pastry smell. So I'm definitely excited. Now, obviously they're full of jam, um, and I don't want to bite straight into that because I'm going to burn my mouth. So I'm going to let them cool down a bit, and I'm going to eat them 
once they've chilled down. So I'm going to uh, take these and pop them in the fridge, um, and uh, just just let the let the heat dissipate. But uh, I'm I'm quite hopeful at this stage. Whether it'll turn out or not <laughs> remains to be seen. But at this stage, I'm I'm quite happy, and I think I'm going to have something very tasty. So I will bring you back when I am having a good munch and we'll see what they taste like and what the effect is. So here's looking at you, sweet buns. Okay, so the goodies have chilled down and it's, it's just time to taste. So I think I'm gonna go with this one. You can see it leaked a little bit, but you know, I think we're okay. Let's uh, rip it open and uh, see what happens. Well. I think that looks pretty good. So it looks nice and fluffy, bunnish on the top. So a bit of a taste test now. Hmm. That's good. It's cooked all the way through, no problems. It's not like any uncooked dough. There's plenty of jam. The cranberries, hmm. Sorry, cranberries give it a nice sweet texture. Has it? Uh, has it turned my mouth through? Uh, uh, maybe, maybe a little bit. Eat the rest, and then we'll see. <laughs> hmm. So, I've eaten that whole one. Quite nice. It's like, it's like this. It's very light. Um, I mean, you say sweet bun, and you think, mm, is it going to be like eating a donut or something? Um, and it's not. So the pastry, it's it's not a sweet pastry. It's not a savoury pastry. It's. Um, I mean, if I had to put it on a side, it would be on the sweeter side. It's not just like a plain pastry, but the sweetness all comes from the filling. Um, in terms of it turning my mouth blue, mm, I've got a blue tinge to my tongue. So, you know, not really worked. Um, perhaps next time I make it and um, maybe I'll do larger sweet buns so I can have thicker pastry, more filling, and I use like three times as much blue food coloring. <laughs> I don't know, but it, it is, it's really nice. It's not like gross stuffing, you know, or anything that's like really sort of bulky or, you know, there's, there's a light, there's a, there's a very airy light texture to it and um, I say the taste of the cranberries in there give it a little bit of texture with the, uh, the jam otherwise it would just be very gooey there's not much to chew it just like the, you know, the, the bun or the bread however when you look at it and the jam will just be very like nim 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 um, but yeah I'm, uh, I'm quite happy with this um, considering it's the first time I've ever made them I'm, uh, I, I feel like I've, I've, done, I've done, done reasonable justice to, to Matt's pranks there although I feel like he had uh, is specially made. I don't feel like he made them himself, um, judging by the fact that uh, the I said I had to had like what, what what did I say? Like three three about three boxes. Uh, and they're, 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 put my teeth back in, like three bags of them or something since um, they'd been in Camelon. So, you know, I don't feel like he was baking them himself. I feel like he went to the baker and was like, "Hey, throw some of this in a special batch for me. Uh, I want to play a prank on someone." You know, getting back to his roots, as he says. So, but yeah, that's it for this week. I've uh, I've, I've really enjoyed making these, to be honest. Um, it's the, the first time I've done like a sweet baking. And, uh, I, you know, I've got to use my rolling pin, uh, which doesn't happen a lot. I brought it specially for making pastries last week for the meat pies, which if you haven't checked out, go have a look. And, uh, you know, I've got to use it again. So uh, who, who knows how often I'll get to get it, uh, get, to get it out. Uh, I've got a nice sticky baking tray to, to clear up here. But, uh, you know, the perks of the job is cleaning afterwards. So next week, if you want to come along and join me, I will be making a, a Wheel of Time dish, but not a Wheel of Time dish. I will be making a special cake for the Black Tower podcast, guys. Uh, we were chatting the other day on Twitter. If you haven't seen them, go out, search uh, Tower Pod. At Tower Pod is, is their, uh, their Twitter handle, or just search Black Tower Podcast. You'll be able to find them. Awesome guys. Um, check out their stuff if you haven't seen it. Uh, very, very hilarious um, and very, very welcoming to first-time readers, experienced readers, 
new to the fandom, the whole the whole shebang. They're great guys. Um, but yeah, we were talking last week, week before, something like that, about um, cakes and desserts and all sorts of things came up. And out of it, we decided we should make a Black Tower cake. So they had some input. I've had some input, and uh, I might test run this one. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm going to try and make that next week. Uh, work permitting because uh, everything's opening up and uh, I am back to work so uh, yeah we'll see how that uh, fits in with my cooking schedule cooking and cooking and cooking it's not cakes but you know still still cooking <laughs> but I will get that done for you uh, if not next week as soon as possible thereafter um, please give them a go tell me what you think tell me how they worked out for you if you've enjoyed my video, please check out some others. Give me a like, subscribe, hit that little bell so you know when I've made a video. Typically, I aim for them to come out on Thursdays, but sometimes I throw in extra videos here and there. Um, you know, I do unboxing videos. Sometimes I do a reaction video, all sorts of things. You know, just just a bit of fun for us here. So, but give me give me a like, give me a follow, subscribe, find me on Twitter if you love dad jokes. Head over to Twitter, Malkiri R, or find uh, search for Malkir Talks on Instagram. I put them on there as well. A daily dad joke, Wheel of Time based. So sometimes a little challenging to discover. Um, I'm in the middle. Today was day two of my tribute to Steve. If those of you don't know what Steve Gate is, again, check out Twitter. It just went crazy the other day. So I am doing seven days worth of Steve Gate influenced Wheel of Time dad jokes. Or Tam jokes, as I like to dub them. Should they be Steve jokes? Steve dad jokes? Steve dad jokes? Stam jokes? Ooh, should I be calling them Stam jokes for the weeks? Well, we'll find out. As I'm filming this, it is day two. If you're watching this on release day, which is Thursday, then it's day four, because I like to release on Thursdays for a bit of fun. Uh, if you're watching it later than that, you might have already missed it. Hopefully you haven't. But regardless, give me a follow, give me a like, give me a subscribe, all those things. Tell me what you like. Tell me what else I could make. Tell me what you'd like me to improve on. I have a very diddy kitchen. My filming angles are very limited, particularly when I need to get the hob top involved. But I do my best to let you see everything. And I'd love to hear what you think. So do all those things. Let me know how your baking turns out. Please give it a go. And uh, if you get a bluer tongue than mine, uh, I would love to see that. So yeah, that's all from me today. You take care, stay safe, and I will see you next time. Cheers.